Hello and welcome to episode 156 of our SAP on Azure video podcast. Today is August 17th and together with Robert and Goran, we are here to talk about anything related to SAP and Microsoft. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hello. A few months ago, we talked about a revolutionary new SDK in our News of the Week sec section, the AI SDK for ABAP. This SDK empowers ABAP developers to consume Azure OpenAI services without leaving their ABAP code or having to know the intricate details of Azure OpenAI. I had the opportunity to present and demo the SDK with the German speaking SAP user group a few months back, which led to some exciting discussions with customers and actually follow up projects. Today, we're thrilled to have the brain behind the AI SDK for ABAP with us, Gopal Nair. We are really looking forward to Gopal introducing the topic and sharing some examples with us. In fact, he has so many great examples that we are planning to do a few follow-up sessions with him, so stay tuned. But before we hand over to him, like always, we'll take a look at the news from this week. And actually, I, I want to put a one disclaimer. Um, for the first time, uh, I, I had my introduction written by ChatGPT, or actually Azure OpenAI. So I, I thought, since since we are talking about AI today in more detail, I wanted to have an AI-based uh, introduction. So that's why uh, yeah, it, it's, it was a little different than, than, than usual, I would say. But Goran, uh, the SAP on Azure NetApp file sizing best practices from, mm -hmm. from Heat. Yeah, so we had Heat. I think two two episodes back on a, on a, a many new Azure Azure NetApp topics, sizing as well. And he promised actually that he would publish a document, yeah. a blog. Actually, it's really deep dive document, so to say, on the best practice. Very excellent, really an excellent. Um, more than a blog, it's really there's a, a lot document. of content there. Exactly, it's yeah. a lot of context. Of who and why and why I should do. And on the end. Basically, he's also going into into the cost calculation of potential what he was showing mm -hmm. the last time, but just he basically described. I mean, OK, let's not just go into detail because it's yeah, very yeah, long, yeah. but it's really an excellent, excellent overview for sizing or for the best practices, also from a performance as well as a cost perspective as well. Okay, yeah. um, the next one, it's uh, this is an interesting part. Um, if you go NFS Azure NetApp, if you go a little bit down after the, oh, if you scroll just a bit uh, down, uh, there is uh, a bit mounting. No, not down. Sorry, you are somewhere, somewhere in the beginning where it is um, uh, important consideration. Sorry, there, uh, yeah. yeah, there, important consideration. Um, for the, for the HANA, generally uh, we support different storages, so premium V1, for different um, uh, caching premium V2, um, Azure NetApp as well, and 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 um, um, ultra disks. Now, generally so far we were telling either or all of this has to be of the same type, mm -hmm. so either premium V1, all of the disk, or ANF or only ultra so hana data can be uh has to if it's ultra on both hana data and hana log has to be on ultra or only on anf or only on premium disk now uh now uh no you switched uh sorry uh can, can you go to, to the next one to the next one uh sorry i start to to talk the next and the next link the next page uh, okay yeah the sorry next yeah. Page. sorry i mixed uh yeah no, this, no problem um, and if you, so basically now what we are also telling is that um, we allowed customer to mix the different for the HANA data and HANA logs actually at different storage types. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For example, uh, INF could be used for the HANA data and HANA logs could be on premium disk. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or different combination. Now, question is what is the benefit there? Uh, so the benefit could be, for example, um, ANF is a networking protocol and premium disk is a block base. On the mm -hmm. VM, we have a separate bandwidth for storage and for the network. Uh, when the networking with ANF, uh, HANA is using the networking bandwidth for the storage as well. 
uh, the VM is using. Yeah. So basically, by combining these two disks, for example, we could uh, uh, for the really huge customer, which needs a lot of throughput and maybe an IOPS, which is very rare, but sometimes they are, you could basically get even more throughput uh, combining the, the, the throughput and IOPS from the networking for an ANF and throughput and IOPS of, of for yeah, the nice. managed disk, for example. Yeah. I mean, it's rare, but it's um, there are <laughs> there's customers customer, that still yeah. require this yeah 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 and the previous one sorry the previous one it was uh, i was just make the document the previous one on the nf we are just talking basically about if you search for uh, slash 26 um range um basically in the past uh or 25 sorry 25. slash 25 yeah. uh basically we are we are recommending um now uh, more to for for the exactly the range of 25 this is the new in the past we were telling our slash 26 so it, okay. it's i mean if there are, there are some reasons behind it of the backend stuff so if there are new if customer is a new one using an azure netup so this is the recommended networking range i mean important part yeah um do we have something else the mv3 oh yeah that that's the great great i mean the new computes queue um yes. used the medium uh, range i mean um if you go down basically yeah table, it's it's yeah. starting from from the table 200 uh 40 gb up to 1 gb to uh, two one terabyte two terabyte and three terabytes so medium size however these are really the newest Intel CPU processor, which gives much more more performance for less money. Let's say they're also yeah. running on on a, on a newer platform, meaning also bringing a lot of more stability and um, definitely recommended. It's a public preview, so customer needs to apply if they want want to run it. Uh, but it's definitely something that all of us are looking forward. Uh, for any customer, even the the um, uh, rise customers are also basically uh, using it separately. Yeah, and I think especially also these roughly three terabytes of of memory machines. I think that was also something that customers were were asking for. So I think exactly, now we, we have exactly, really a nice yeah. um, so breadth. Exactly, slicing as per their need. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Cool. Good. Then um, leaving the infrastructure and going up one one level, basically um, the CDC connector, so change data capture um, connector um, that is part of the whole um, Synapse Azure Data Factory. I mean, we had Ulrich Christ um, before, and, and there there are some, some links, obviously, also mentioned here. But um, Batuhan um, um, published this uh, this blog post that that talks about uh, yeah again how you can set up CDC uh, pipeline, how to um, continuously um, get the data from your SAP system and mig migrate it over, and and it's a nice uh, blog post that really outlines um, the steps how to how to set this up. Um, also, really how this looks like on the SAP side. So I think um, if you if you are interested in this, then that's definitely also a very interesting um, blog post. The last topic, and again, very much fitting to um, our topic um, today, is another blog post from Martin from Martin Pankratz, um, talking about the um, ABAP uh, or the AI SDK for ABAP in the context of S4HANA public cloud or, or uh, the, the cloud environment, sorry, S4HANA cloud environment, so steampunk basically, which is really, really interesting because obviously um, with, uh, yeah, especially with S4HANA public cloud, with, with BTP offering um, uh, the um, ABAP environment there, it's obviously also very interesting how, how can you benefit and 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 leverage um, um, Azure OpenAI services, and and this is a really nice blog post, and and like always, it's also a beautiful scenario. So so basically, I mean, SAP TechEd is coming up, so some other um, travels um, are are coming up, and obviously you you need to uh, yeah explain or describe why do you want to go there. Um, you need to um, um, put some some reasons there, and he really has a nice blog post that uh, uh, uses Azure OpenAI to explain or to, to give you some descriptions of the travel purpose. So, so why should you go there? Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a nice blog post that, that um, leverages the functionality of yeah, um, Azure OpenAI. So with this, um, I think that that's all that we have for, for this week from, from a news perspective. 
So, um, Gopal, maybe before we go into the content um, that you have prepared, maybe you can quickly introduce yourself and what are you doing at Microsoft? How how is it that you um, came up with the AI SDK for for uh, for ABAP? Thank you, Holger. Thank you, Goran, uh, for having me here. I am a software engineer, a developer, and um, my title at Microsoft is a principal software engineer. And I have been at Microsoft for about five years now. And um, I, uh, I, I like development activities like algorithms and thinking uh, or like splitting multiple problems into like, you know, smaller issues and then trying and tackling them and like combining the different layers together so that robust applications are built. Um, because of that, uh, because of that, and like, you know, a lot of learning from people surrounding you and things like that. And <clears throat> what I observed is as ABAP developers, we focus a lot on business problems, how enterprise problems are solved using ABAP as a programming language, and it has a small problem issue with it. And ABAPers generally tend to focus on what is inside the SAP ecosystem. Um, whenever there are issues like hey, we need to have a OAuth flow or we need mm -hmm. to have mm -hmm. a network communication to outside world and then there is complexities around it. There is that actually heal for ABAP developers and there is something that um, it, it's not as smooth as um, it needs to be or is in other programming languages. AI SDK rose from the idea of, hey, there is this API that AI engines expose, like for example, Azure OpenAI or OpenAI expose. Let's have a mechanism by which ABAP developers feels right at home. Uh, for an ABAP developer, it is not like a complex network communication or complex mechanisms and things like that. Rather, something that they are familiar with, like internal tables, like objects and ABAP objects and things like that, that they are very, very familiar with without leaving their domain of expertise, how do we bring the AI capability to an ABAP developer and hence into SAP? That is the problem statement we were trying to tackle. And, and quite frankly, uh, the, the challenge was, how do we make it so simple that it is something that people can learn and enjoy working with? So that was the inspiration behind AI SDK for SAP. And I think th that is really something very, very important because um, um, if, if I'm an ABAP developer, I, I know ABAP very well. And, and the of ABAP um, in, in general is that I can do everything from within. Um, it, it used to be SE80, now it's ADT, but, but, but that's where, where I have everything that, that is required. So there is, in a lot of cases, no need to go outside um, and, and, and consume other services because everything is already there. And I think that's now um, the, the, the beautiful concept of the AI SDK that you bring this complexity um, fr from consuming these outside services into the ABAP um, environment, basically, so that I, as a developer, I can just stay in my ABAP world. I use my ABAP classes, my function modules, but then I can also now benefit from the Azure OpenAI services. So I thought that was really an, an absolutely amazing, a really cool um, SDK for, for ABAP developers. But Holger, uh, I, would, I would add that um, just like any field, any new field, and AI is a is kind of relatively new field. We are all still getting used to it, and like you know, amazed at some of the wonders that it is, <laughs> yes. it is doing and things like that. Um, but it still requires some knowledge of the some of the concepts in the AI things. Like for example, when we deal with these uh, AI engines, terminologies get thrown around like models deployments, um, fine tunings and like completions, mm -hmm. chat completion, so on and so forth. So there is a, I wouldn't, uh, so there is still like, you know, for using the domain, which is the artificial intelligence domain, there is a little bit of learning curve. And this is where I wanted to call our Microsoft has excellent, I mean, amazing, uh, amazingly beautiful documentation about all this, in which makes it fun as well as like you know very effective to spend a little bit time and then actually get up to speed on most of these concepts. And once that concept is 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 there, you are you have mastered those concepts. AISDK working with AISDK for feels right at home. And we can certainly look at that documentation website as well in terms of like you know Microsoft documentation website and which is supplemented with the AISDK documentation. 
Yeah, let, let, let's take a look at some of these terminologies because you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, if we, if we just look back, um, I think now a lot of people know what prompt engineering is or they, they, they can think about what does it mean. But um, like half a year ago, I think nobody knew what, what or very few people knew what actually prompt engineering is and, and how important it is to, to come up with a good prompt. So I think it's really good to to take a look at the terminologies that is um, part of um, AI, Azure Open AI, and and these new terminologies there. Let me let me share my screen and mm -hmm. then we can uh, we can certainly take a quick look at it. Um, so uh, in in our experience, when we are talking about um, AI SDK to to ABAP developers within Microsoft as well as outside. Uh, some of the first few questions that come is, hey, you mentioned about this terminology called model or deployment mm -hmm. files. What are those? So we, we decided, OK, these these are kind of like models are something like um, a, a combination of an algorithm trained with a whole bunch of data. Think of it as like one file, one like one big chunk that is have it's a brain, but lifeless. You know, like it, it, it is it is just sitting there without ability to do anything, kind of like your PC hardware without the operating system. It is useless. It won't boot up or anything like that, right? Like, you know, it is that basic raw hardware kind of thing. Uh, so that is kind of where the models are. Now, deployments is a concept that is, was introduced by Azure OpenAI, but it is kind of applicable for OpenAI as well. In OpenAI area, models are also the deployments, but deployments brings these lifeless models to like kind of think of it as infusing life into that lifeless model and bringing it. <laughs> so in if, if we were to compare this to an object-oriented concept, models is a class definition, meaning like in, a, in ABAP terms, a class definition. And deployment is an instance of that class, mm -hmm. an object. So that it can be a kind of a parallel. Mm -hmm. Files and fine tunings. A file is basically used for multiple things in an AI context. Um, I'm sure we all know what files are, but in this AI context, files are used to train a AI engine model to enhance its capability with certain things that we know. And then later, ask new questions to it so that whatever it has learned from its own intelligence as well as what we taught when we say we taught we have to teach something through a medium and that medium can be filed so file mechanism is also part of ai sdk uh, capabilities <coughs> fine tuning i just mentioned is ability to kind of create new models along with some additional training so as you are building business processes there is a lot of data that is present in your SAP system, right? In our SAP system. And we can use some of those to kind of understand more about our business process, train more and things like that. Fine tuning allows you to do that using in conjunction with files. Embeddings is a very interesting concept. And, you know, remember when we grew up, we we had this graphs like, you know, when we so when we plot a graph X axis and Y axis and we say zero zero, we put a dot in zero zero location of a graph, right? Or like 10, 10, you put a location. Now, when we advance to more higher grades, we knew that there is a third dimension Z where you put it in the space 3D programming, 3D mapping and so on and so forth. Now, I want to stretch. I want you to stretch that imagination and think of a world where there are 1,589 dimensions. So three itself is hard enough. Now think of 1,539 dimensions. It, I, I simply cannot, I have tried, but I simply cannot, but that is so huge, right? Now, the thing is every word, every sentence, everything has a location in this uh, phantom dimension. And there is a location which is close to a similar meaning location. So that is a concept of embedding and embedding models generate this huge, this, that, this point of that 1,859 dimension so that you can place a particular content into that. This is super beneficial when it comes into fast searching and like, you know, uh, similarity and mm -hmm. classifications and those kind of things. So embeddings is a little bit complex to imagine and things like that, but it is super useful. That is also provided, that feature is also provided by ASDK. 
completions and chat completions is generally what we mean by hey gpt3 gpt4 where it is generator generative way and we'll see some demos in our system and lastly enterprise control is not something that is available uh, generally as like you know that we hear often but when we talk about sap sap has is an as an enterprise solution has criticality in terms of data that we handle we are need to be responsible for about the 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 data that goes in and out of the system enterprise control uh, feature that is part of asdk provides that capability for administrators to control what mechanisms like these models deployments files fine tune whatever we saw which people or which users can work with which of these features so mm -hmm. it's kind of like a tight security mechanism around this whole thing so that is and, and that security is inside of the sap system security context correct right. so that here's here's the challenge we when we engineered this or architected this the the security mechanism say here at microsoft may not be the same at somewhere else or some other organization each organization has their own security policies that they want to implement right so how do we make it in such a way that it is there but at the same time it is uh, it is it is uh, usable or like you know modifiable easily mm -hmm. or implementable easily by every organization to fine tune it or like you know not fine tune rather like you know implement it to their own policies right so that was that whole mechanism and how how the control happens that is what this enterprise control is it is very easy to make uh, to 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 implement now all these terminologies and things like that i want to uh, take your attention to something where which is a companion of this whole ai sdk and that is our ai sdk documentation so the things that we just mentioned uh, so we we go into the uh, thing and by the way Olga, you love this uh, uh, I know you are a big, both of you are big proponents of accessibility and like you know all those. So uh, if you if you don't like the the dark theme, you can always switch to the uh, light theme. Uh, but if you go into the documentation, this has different sections which detail what we just mentioned, and one of them is enterprise control, which details mm -hmm. how to implement it, what are the what are called profiles, and how how all this but it's an optional component you can implement it if your organization needs it but if you don't want it it'll just silently sit there without obstructing anything so the documentation website is a key part of it now um as a starting point the the the, the key thing is initializing or setting up the resource and Azure OpenAI resource or open AI and uh, things like that there are certain steps where you have to take to install or bring to life an AI engine. Those are detailed in the AI resource setup section of the documentation. So for example, if you are interested in Azure OpenAI, the initial setup is documented here, as well as there are video tutorials which showcase how exactly to do that. And following this, it, once, once that is set up, this is the result. In Azure portal, you have an Azure OpenAI resource, which has certain like keys and endpoints and things like that, which is certainly detailed in, I mean, which is told in detail within this tutorial videos. So we ha also have the endpoint and key and everything is detailed here in resource setup. So once the resources are set up, installing the SDK comes next. Um, that is also again part of the documentation, um, Holger, and um, we, we, we have uh, different uh, mechanisms to install. Again, there is a video tutorial along with how to test your installation using a first um, a first run. So you, there are mechanisms, there are steps where you go to S Trust and install certificates and things like that. Thanks to you, like we didn't catch it initially. You you are the one who figured out that S Trust needs to be like you know fine tuned if, you, if I remember correctly. And like you know it was uh, it was fun uh, uh, figuring it out and uh, things like that. So all these are detailed in this installing the SDK. Once somebody has all this set up, which by following the documentation. Working with SDK section in the documentation website allows you to kind of like work deeply with this SDK. It explains right. what each right. of the parameters are and things like that. 
Right now, AI SDK for SAP supports two AI engines, that is Azure OpenAI and OpenAI. We do plan to support other AI engines in the future as well. Now, this whole documentation site can be reconfigured by you, the user who is looking at it, to put it into an OpenAI mode or Azure OpenAI mode by simply toggling it to Azure OpenAI or OpenAI. You see here. And so if you put it into OpenAI, the entire website has reconfigured itself to give you relevant information about only OpenAI. But if you are working with Azure OpenAI, all you have to do is switch, switch back and then everything else. You don't have to switch one by one. Uh, that would be very uh, cumbersome, but everything is switched back to open AI mode. But but that's actually I, I quickly also want to highlight this because I think that that's really, really a strong statement that you're doing there. So so you're not only supporting Azure OpenAI, which obviously is, is from Microsoft, but right. you're also supporting OpenAI, which is not from Microsoft um, um, in the AI SDK for ABAP. So so you're, you're really giving um, the, the, the companies a choice like what what they want to use in their um, ABAP code. Absolutely. Our goal, our mission is not um, is to be the best SDK out there to help ABAP developers to achieve AI or achieve bringing AI capabilities to SAP. It's and uh, it is my strong belief that at this point Microsoft leads in AI by leaps and bounds. And I, uh, Azure Open AI, when it comes into enterprise applications, is one of the best uh, AI solutions out there. But that so it, it it can be a natural choice, but from an AI SDK perspective, our goal is to provide a tool which people have freedom to choose what AI engine they they need to use. They can use most of them. And like you know, right now we have support for Azure OpenAI and OpenAI, but there are other engines, Hugging Face, and many other places which we will expand our uh, support. And one thing that we are careful about is when we build and like publish something, we want to make sure that it is of high quality, top quality, so that it doesn't go and like you know create problems in an enterprise application. So there is a lot of those testing processes and things like that that goes on behind the scenes before releasing a feature. So those are the so now uh, I mean like you know then our documentation website goes into models deployment and the, the, the terminologies and things like that. But before before we go into more detail, like you know the this documentation website has link to the GitHub repository, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is um, which is what this is and like you know we have the code and ABAP Git installing the AI SDK using ABAP Git. Sorry, um, right here which talks about using ABAP Git to install it. And there is again a tutorial for it. And um, based on feedback that we got, uh, there is also a plan of, it, of uh, um, you know, preparing a transport mechanism for installing in, in, a, in the near future. Uh, some customers were mentioning that they have a hard time using um, ABAP Git because of the restrictions in their environment and things like that. So, a transport mechanism is forthcoming as well. So that is based on our, on our customers' feedback. So with that said, like you know, I right, would you would you like to see some 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 running of this, um, the actual running of this in SAP system? Is there an interest absolutely. in that? Absolutely, yeah. Oh, okay, so let's take let's take models, right? That's the simplest. I'm in the model section, working with the SDK, the model section, and let's use Azure OpenAI. So I'm in, so I'm not in OpenAI mode, but Azure OpenAI mode, and I do see all these features comes with a demo program that showcases how to use that feature in an actual ABAP code. So in this case, when I come to this website, I have this demo program documented as ZP uh, MS AI SDK demo models, and it's in this package. OK, so let me log on to the system and let's run it to see this whole thing in action. But before that, I want to call attention to our Azure OpenAI resource, and I'm going to the keys and endpoints uh, here. This is the endpoint that we communicate with for interacting with the AI engine, right? And um, the keys for authentication. And by the way, it's not just the keys. You can also use Active Directory yep. mechanism, better token for authentication. With that said, I have a ABAP system that I'm running uh, right now. I, actually, uh, you may be interested to know that this is running in Docker right now, and it's a local uh, ABAP application. Uh, SAP just published the Docker um, image for it, so we are taking advantage of that. 
And okay. this is that application server. I'm logged into the application server and perform the installation. So we have this whole package. Uh, now I'm going to open up that package we saw in the documentation. So let me just again go back there. So we have the package AZOI SDK demos, and we are going to run this models demo program. So if I switch back to the uh, server, so I have the models program demo program here. And then I'm going to execute this. So it, the model, uh, the, uh, the intent of this demo program is to give uh, ABAPers a mechanism to learn by looking at the code. So that's yeah. why it is heavily yeah. documented. And so it may not necessarily follow all the best practices of mm -hmm. ABAP and things like that. But the intent here is to give clarity to ABAPers on how to use the SDK. So that is our uh, goal. So I'm going to execute this and I have already a um, variant. So I'm executing this. And by the way, this key will rotate it uh, after this uh, recording. So um, no, no yeah. chance to misuse it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just wanted to say that. <laughs> um, no so need to have, blur it, Holger, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if we execute this. So we have a whole bunch of this data that is coming back in this list. So we he, we have the status code 200. And by the way, this is how AI engine gives back the data. So if you look at it, there is this whole complexity and like, you know, all kinds of um, uh, all kinds of mechanism, JSON format and things like that. But for an ABAP developer, as far as an ABAP developer is concerned, this internal table is much more easier yes. to work with. Yeah, because Absolutely. they know how to they're dealing every day. Yeah, that's the way. Exactly. Yeah. So AI SDK stands in the middle of this whole communication. And if needed, you certainly have access to it to the JSON. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but at the same time, the whole there is a the value proposition of it is also that there is this you don't have to go spend time and like effort figuring out how to parse it and all those exactly. kind of things. All that is done for you. So uh, so these are the list of models. Now, if we take a look at that portal again, um, let me just go there. So I'm in that AI studio, and then we look at the list of models for this. This is what has come back, mm -hmm. the list of mm -hmm. models. And some of them, and uh, some additional ones are also there, which, which is not present in the UI, but those are like you know in preview mode and so on and so forth. So, so these are all the list of models that are available. Now, uh, remember, as far as the ABAP developer is concerned, all they have to do is make this call. All the complexities are encapsulated within the AI SDK. So now, if we go again for the, so we we have we have one of the models, text DaVinci 003, and again the status code gives you information about what it is. Uh, I mean, like, you know, did it succeed? And the model get, for example, mm -hmm. gives you, and, um, uh, let me close this, gives you, again, about friendly information about um, about this whole thing in the sense, like whether it is completion enabled and like, you know, about parsable, about uh, programming language friendly thing. Now, I'm sure, so you mentioned, Holger, that you, you had written the, um, uh, written the, uh, the the initial introduction using GPT, right? Let's try and do that using AI SDK and uh, ask it to introduce uh, ourselves, right? So for that, I'm going to run another demo program called Completions. Mm -hmm. Again, we will discuss more in future sessions about each of yep. these completions and things like that. Again, the idea of this whole program is for people to understand how to use the AI SDK. So there is a demo completion program, and I'm running that again with certain um, with the demo parameters. And let's ask AI engine a question. Uh, please write me a an introduction uh, for podca podcast about Microsoft technologies. Maybe, or do you want to? No, no, that that's perfect. I was just saying while while you click on generate, um, I I think the, the the beauty here is that you're providing 
the demo program. So I, as the ABAP developer, I can exactly see what you have done and, and I can test it. I can play around with this and I can see what what, what the results are. And, and if I say, well, this is perfect. I, I would love to have this to um, create descriptions for my products in the SAP system, or I would like to use this to create a summary of my invoices or something. Then I can look at the code that you've provided and just copy and paste the, the, the relevant pieces. I stay in my ABAP environment and I can get a, a similar beautiful integration of Azure OpenAI in my ABAP Absolutely. program. Absolutely. So the, the demo programs are there to act as a reference for you as mm -hmm. a developer mm -hmm. uh, to learn how to use the AI SDK. And, um, and, and, and by the way, if after that there are questions or like confusions and things like that, there is or there are always channels. So if we look at the screen here, it has generated the uh, the, the introduction. But um, it, let's say somebody has still questions, right? And they want to like, you know, have mm -hmm. additional clarity mm -hmm. with the community and things like that. If we go back to our Git repository, there are issues if you come across issues, but mm -hmm. also, more mm -hmm. importantly, there are discussions and the links to that is also present in our documentation website, discussions and report an issue. So here, uh, People are asking questions on like, you know, additional uh, clarifications. And if, if the questions are not already answered or like, you know, if it makes sense to put it in the documentation, we make it a point to uh, bring it into the document. Some of the points mentioned here actively were asked by many people and then it made it to the documentation because we felt that, yeah, this, yeah. this is a point that we need to clarify in the document. So it's it's a growing community. It's like we are all together and like uh, it's it's fun to work together as well. <laughs> so that's AI SDK introduction actually. Nice. I mean, the the more examples you give, the the easiest to, way is to learn it. This is how I'm learning to how to do something. Let me look how somebody else did it, you know, and just to start with, right? So great. Right. And, and, and some exactly. of our colleagues, uh, Holger, sorry, um, uh, took this and generated whole ABAP code, and they have constructed certain um, mechanisms by which kind of think of it as an ABAP co-pilot and um, uh, some some beautiful uh, concept where you you go, wow, that, that is awesome. Uh, th there are many examples like that. And, and in, in future episodes, we will take a look at some of some of those. But but sure. Gopal, what 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 really what, what I thought was was really absolutely amazing is is um, exactly this. I'm completely new to the AI SDK. I just heard about it. I'm I'm going to the documentation, and the first thing that that you can see the documentation is really really extensive. And and if I if I compare this with other SDKs where the focus is more on look this is the tools this is the technology I'll just chip it I'll put it on GitHub and documentation okay we'll we'll talk about this later but but you from the very beginning put a lot of focus on the documentation so so that was one thing that I really loved the other thing that I found extremely strong is um exactly these very small demo programs. I mean, they're, they're not super fancy or anything, but they do exactly what they're supposed to do. So again, I have no idea. I'm, I'm starting the AI SDK for the very first time. I have no idea where to get started. So I'll take one of the demo programs that you have. I just execute them. I have a nice experience, like very much what we just saw. And I can go into the source code and see what have you done. And then, then that's a much, much better starting yeah. point for me. And that's what I so 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 I'm not only excited about the AI SDK that you've developed, but really all the effort that you put around this. Because if you want to make this available to others, that's I would say equally important that you have good documentation, that you have good examples, that you have this this beautiful community that you're building right now, that that you're actively listening on GitHub. This is so much worth it, I would say. So so I, I'm I'm sure. I mean what we see. I mean. I, I cannot tell any any customer names, obviously, but for me it was absolutely amazing how how many customers really reached out, how customers got excited, and how how they are really engaging now and working with the AI SDK. So so I think it's clearly what what you have done there is absolutely amazing, and it resonates with a lot of customers already. Thank you, thank you, Holger, and uh, those. It was a deliberate attempt to keep those more demo programs simple because as a developer, many a times when when we uh, when I learn many things, I have, sometimes I have seen these demo programs which seems like it is attempting to showcase the 
original author's prowess in the in the complexity and and uh, of how complex you can make and things like that. The problem with that is by the time a layman like me for that technology is looking at it, I'm not really sure which is yes. the uh, I mean, it, it is all Greek and Latin land. Like, you know, you want to uh, keep it. So uh, because uh, because of that experience and negative experience, I wanted to make sure and like, you know, we we our entire group and you included, we, we brainstormed on it. And like, you know, we, we came up with the idea that our demo programs must be as simple as possible. So yeah. that's that's what we did. <laughs> Hello world, you know, that, that's the yeah. being fan, you know. <laughs> Right. Perfect. Yeah. So, 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 Gopal, I think this this was an amazing start. And and as right. said, uh, we we want to make this. Um, th this was really just the the, the beginning, basically. I, I know you have a lot of amazing demos on on top of this. And as you said, we 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 saw within Microsoft already other colleagues picking this up and and building some some cool stuff. We'll we'll talk about this later. But but for now, um, I think this this was a really really great start. Thank you so much, Gopal. And thank you very much. We, we will see you again very soon on the on, on the channel here. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank Perfect. you. Thank, thank you, everyone. You.